this evening. So uh, pelvic fractures compromise about 3 to 4% of all fractures, and uh, these are basically high energy uh, pelvic ring fractures, um, generally due to motor vehicle accidents or uh, MVA against pedestrians or fall or crush injuries. Uh, the morbidity and mortality is about 10 to 15% in adults, and um, if the patient is hypotensive at the time of presentation, it increases up to 50%. And uh, also, if the uh, it's an open fracture, then the morbidity and mortality is about 30%. And it can be reduced by prompt stabilization of uh, unstable fractures. So uh, a quick few slides on the anatomy. Um, basically, the SI joint is shown here, sacrum, the sacral strut, the foramina, the uh, midline of the sacrum. Uh, superior pubic, inferior pubic rami, and the acetabula. Um, I'll be showing some ligaments here in the next slide. Uh, these are the anterior and posterior views. So this is the anterior sacroiliac ligament, the sacrospinous and the sacrotuberous ligaments. And then on the posterior view, we have the posterior um, short sacroiliac ligaments and the long posterior sacroiliac ligaments. And here we are seeing the iolumbar ligaments. Going back to the previous slide, the same ligaments on um, uh, different uh, um, style of presentation. So basically, uh, the anterior, the posterior sacroiliac ligaments, the sacrospinous, sacrotubular ligaments, and the iolumbar ligaments. These are some of the ligaments that we should um, remember. So imaging techniques, um, the various imaging modalities are plain film, CT, MRI, uh, fast scan. I'll just um, tell you fast exam, the uh, retrograde urethrogram and CD histograms and arteriography. Uh, plain films in, in uh, today's scenario have a somewhat limited view, but in um, uh, certain situations, um, immediately just the plain x-rays are done. Uh, these are some of the views which are uh, done, but uh, in um, uh, pelvic fractures, the patient may be having um, unstable fractures and it may not be possible to do all the views. And CT, of course, nowadays is the modality of choice. Uh, with multiplanar and 3D reconstructions, we can accurately identify all the fractures, even the um, joints. And uh, the additional advantage, of course, is uh, we can detect the pelvic hemorrhage any active contrastive stabilization to detect active hemorrhage, and of course the organs, urinary bladder, etc. MRI um, is not really required in um, uh, cases of pelvic uh, trauma. Uh, it's only when the images are when the injury is extremely subtle and basically just subtle ligament injuries are there which are not picked up on CT, then MRI may, may be done. And of course, if the patient has severe osteopenia and the subtle or occult fractures do not even picked up on CT then MRI may be done to assess for any marrow edema and assess for subtle uh, bony injury. So apart from these two indications, not much indications um, of MRI. Of course, CT is the main modality of choice. Uh, fast exam is done in some centers. It's basically a focused assessment with sonography for trauma, wherein if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, it is not even enough time to do a CT or any other thing. A uh, quick ultrasound is done to check for gross hemoperitoneum. And sorry for this spelling mistake. There's gross hemoperitoneum, and the patient is immediately wheeled, wheeled into the um, OT theater. Um, uh, the other thing, if you are suspecting the GU injury, uh, we may do a retrograde urethrogram or a CD histogram. And in case the patient already has a full leaf catheter and you pick up some fractures, you may immediately want to do a CD histogram right away. Um, arteriography is uh, to detect um, any um, active hemorrhage and to embolize it later and to pick up all hematomas. Uh, the main um, uh, discussion uh, would be centered around the pelvic ring fractures. Um, I'll be basically discussing these in detail, and then I'll talk about some other sacral and acetabular fractures. Um, coming straight to pelvic ring fractures, there are multiple um, classification systems in use. The uh, most common and widely accepted is a, the Young system of uh, classification, which is based on the mechanism of injury. Uh, the, it is divided into four uh, basic types of fractures, the lateral compression fractures, anterior posterior compression fractures, uh, vertical shear fractures, and a combined mechani mechan uh, mechanical fractures, where there is a combination of um, um, the above three in any pattern. Um, of course, um, hemorrhage is predominantly seen in the uh, APC and the vertical shear fractures, anterior posterior compression fractures, and uh, 
vertical shear fractures, which are um, generally more severe. Um, now coming to the uh, uh, first type, that is the lateral compression fractures. Now here the basic mechanism is lateral compression to the pelvis, basically either to the sacrum or the ilium, or there may be an MBA rollover. Uh, uh, the uh, fractures uh, here that we see are cubic remi fractures, which are generally transverse in orientation, and there may be an ipsilateral or contralateral posterior injury, that is injury to the posterior part of the pelvis. And these are subdivided into three categories, but basically in all categories, uh, there will be a pubic ramus fracture and then some kind of a posterior injury. Uh, this is an overview of the lateral compression fractures. Initially, these slides may appear a bit confusing and the uh, fractures, uh, the names just may appear too much. But um, as we uh, uh, start approaching them in a, a systematic mat pattern, um, these are not very difficult to um, understand and uh, then classify. So uh, lateral compression fractures, like I said, there'll be a fracture of the pubic ramus. So these are divided into one, two, and three. In one, there'll be just a fracture of the uh, pubic ramus. And uh, this is basically um, lateral compression to the sacrum. So there'll be a fracture of the sacral strut, that is the uh, uh, sacrum, maybe just lateral to the neural foramina. The second one is an ipsilateral injury to the um, iliac bone. So there's a fracture in the right pubic uh, uh, ramus here, and then the same site um, iliac bone. So in this, there was uh, 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 the pubic uh, ramus and the sacrum. Here it's pubic ramus and the iliac bone. Um, these two fractures are, this one is definitely stable, and this one is also usually stable. Whereas the uh, lateral compression type three fractures are more severe, and here uh, you can have either this or this pattern, wherein you'll have a pubic ramus fracture with either fracture of the sacrum or the um, um, iliac bone, but also a contralateral um, uh, injury, which is uh, uh, basically an AP compression injury of the opposite side as well. So I'll start showing examples of uh, these one by one. So coming to um, lateral compression fracture type one, so just the pubic symphysis and the uh, fracture of the uh, ipsilateral sacral structure, just a compression fracture. Here I've shown this on an X-ray. Uh, this is the uh, fracture of the um, uh, superior pubic ramus. And here um, there is a fracture, a subtle fracture of the um, sacrum. A bit difficult to appreciate on this one. Same thing, uh, a different case seen on CT. So the lateral compression um, uh, fracture type one, you see a fracture of the superior pubic ramus. Um, it is horizontally uh, oriented, a transverse fracture. Um, it is very easy to miss these uh, subtle fractures. So whenever you are um, seeing cases of uh, pelvic fractures, be sure you look at every portion of the uh, posterior uh, part of the pelvic ring very carefully, and I'll show you more cases wherein the uh, posterior components are sometimes very um, subtle. And uh, if you're doing a multi-detector CT with the latest technique and you do not pick up these subtle fractures, it does not um, uh, then, um, you know, uh, uh, correct you in a good light. And uh, the important thing is, if you know the patterns, then you know where exactly to look for and what exactly to look for. Um, maybe the um, classification, you may not want to uh, say it is, uh, it is LC1 or LC2. You may not want to classify it, but you definitely want to enlist all the fractures. And these classifications are helpful in these situations where you know exactly what are the patterns to look for. So this, uh, if you can remember, it is a lateral compression type 1 fracture where there is a fracture of the pubic synthesis of the same side and a subtle fracture of the um, uh, sacrum, uh, sacral um, struct. Then coming to LC2, here the, there is a fracture of the pubic uh, ramus of one side and instead of the sacrum, the fracture is in the um, uh, iliac bone. So this, in this, the mechanism of injury is basically a lateral compression to the ilium. So again, a similar fracture. Now here you can see how subtle the fractures are of the um, iliac bone posteriorly. Just seen as small linear lucencies. Now coming to the uh, third type, the lateral compression type three fractures. Here you will have a pattern of either LC1 or, or LC2 plus a contralateral compression fracture. 
So here, um, this is an X-ray. This is also what is called the windswept pelvis. There is a fracture of the superior pubic ramus. Uh, maybe also an inferior pubic ramus here on this side. And then uh, the uh, sacral fracture is not well appreciated here. But you see there is diastasis of the opposite sacroiliac joint, which is just a subtle finding here. Same thing on um, uh, CT in a different patient. So we have a fracture of the superior pubic ramus. Now here you see there is just slight widening of the uh, sacroiliac joint and there is a small avulsion fracture here indicating that the um, anterior sacroiliac um, ligaments have uh, been torn in this case. And some more images of the same. Now we had seen here there is a fracture of the spear pubic ramus. There is um, a widening of the uh, same side sacroiliac joint with a small um, fracture fragment. And as you go down, you see injuries on the opposite side as well. So some more injuries on the same side, the sacrum. Here again, there is widening of the sacroiliac joint of the opposite side. There is also a fracture on the um, opposite side in the iliac bone, seen here also. And there is, because of this widening, there is slight tilting of the pelvis to this side as well. So these fractures are unstable. Now coming to the second category, that is the anterior posterior compression fractures. Um, here, uh, the main finding that we see is a pubic symphysis diastasis. Normally, the pubic symphysis should not measure um, uh, more than five millimeters. So in, um, in these cases, there will be a pubic symphysis diastasis where there will be um, widening of the uh, pubic symphysis or uh, rami fractures along with posterior ligament tears, that is the posterior sacroiliac ligament tears or the sacrospinous and uh, sacrotuberous ligament tears. Again, these are classified into A, P, C, 1, 2, and 3 based on the um, uh, degree of severity. Uh, again, this slide will appear a bit confusing in the beginning, but these A, P compression fractures, all of them, you can see there is widening of the symphysis uh, pubis. That is the common thing. And then the degree of um, uh, posterior injury. Um, in APC1, the widening of the pubic symphysis is generally less. It is only about, uh, it is about 5 mm, of course, but less than 2 cm. And there is uh, only a slight stretch of the um, sacroiliac ligament, so which may not be picked up on CT at times. But widening of pubic symphysis uh, less than 2 uh, cm, and maybe not any other uh, finding if you're seeing on CT, it could be an APC type 1 um, injury. In type 2, the widening of the pubic symphysis is more than 2 centimeters, and um, there is anterior SI ligament tear. So definitely you will see the widening of the SI joint. And there are uh, there is also tear of the sacrospinous and um, sacrotuberous ligaments. And this injury is unstable, and it is also known as the open book fractures. And coming to APC3, I'll just show um, cases. There is again a widening, marked widening of the pubic synthesis, more than um, two centimeters. And there's both anti and posterior um, sacroiliac ligaments. Both are torn along with the SS and ST ligaments. So we'll just see um, some examples. So just again, APC1 injury, there is just mild widening of the pubic synthesis, which is less than two centimeter. And there will be just mild widening of the anterior sacroiliac joint on it can on any one side, and uh, this may not be always picked up on uh, CT. The mild widening. So this is just an X-ray showing the uh, mild widening of the pubic synthesis. Coming to APC two injuries here. There is tearing of the anterior sacroiliac ligaments and disruption of the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments. Now, these are uh, rotationally unstable, but they are vertically stable since the posterior sacroiliac ligaments are still intact. It's only the anterior sacroiliac, sacroiliac ligaments which are torn. And uh, like I said, widening is uh, more than um, a two centimeter, and there'll be obvious widening of the anterior sacroiliac joint in APC type two injuries. Whereas in APC type one, there was just mild stretching and the widening of the um, uh, joint may not be picked up. 
So coming to APC type 2 injury, the widening of the pubic synthesis is definitely more than 2 centimeter, and you are easily picking up the slight widening of the sacroiliac joint here, the joint space. Seeing some uh, APC type 3 injuries, um, in this, there is complete separation of the hemipelvis. Now, there is disruption of both the anterior and the posterior sacroiliac ligaments and the sacros uh, tuberous and sacrospinous ligaments. Now, these cases are both rotationally and vertically unstable. Um, I will show you another set of injuries, which is the vertical shear injury. The difference between APC3 and vertical shear injury is that in this, these are vertically unstable pelvis, but there is no obvious uh, you know, vertical offset of the hemipelvis. And this is what differentiates APC3 from vertical shear injuries. Now, here, there is widening of the uh, pubic symphysis. And there is widening of the sacroiliac joint space, both anteriorly and posteriorly. So there is um, injury of both the anterior um, um, sacroiliac um, ligaments and the posterior sacroiliac ligaments. And there is also slight posterior displacement of the sacroiliac joint here, which shows that there is the posterior sacroiliac ligament clearly shows that the posterior sacroiliac ligament is also torn. The widening here is more anteriorly, so the anterior ligament is torn. And once the posterior ligament goes, so both the anterior and posterior ligaments are gone, so there is also just slight uh, displacement. Now, coming to the vertical shear fractures, um, in this there will be uh, sacroiliac displacement, which is even um, uh, seen on x-rays. So the mechanism is called from significant height, and uh, it can be only a ligamentous injury, but it may involve um, fractures also. So these fractures, these uh, sorts of injuries are always unstable. All the ligaments, the iliolumbar ligaments and the um, sacrospinous, sacrotuberous ligaments are torn, and there is a vertical offset. The pubic synthesis is widened and displaced superior inferiorly, and similarly, the sacroiliac joint, all the ligaments are torn, and it is also there is a vertical offset. So, same thing, just the important uh, point to be picked up on these uh, vertical shear injuries or vertical shear fractures are the sacroiliac joint displacement. And these are always unstable injuries. Uh, two types of uh, vertical shear um, uh, fractures or injuries are described, just some uh, fancy names, but um, um, we'll just show some examples. Uh, one is the malgagne fracture, and the other is the bucket handle fracture. In a malgagne fracture, it is superior and inferior pubic rami fractures on one side and the same um, ipsilateral SI joint displacement. And there are slight variants also in this type. The other one is the bucket handle fracture where there are superior and inferior pubic rami fractures on one side, but uh, SI joint displacement is of the um, contralateral side. So here, we're seeing both superior and inferior pubic rami of left side and then there is uh, an iliac fracture with uh, superior inferior displacement. So what I was telling was the variance, when we say it's ipsilateral sacroiliac joint displacement, there can be an ipsilateral sacroiliac joint displacement or some variations. Variance means either there can be a displacement of the joint or there can be a displaced fracture of the ilium or a displaced fracture of the um, sacral wing. So all these three are the posterior components. So, but there has to be a, an element of superior inferior displacement, be it at the sacroiliac joint or the eyelid bone fracture or the sacral fracture. And similarly, there will be fractures of both the superior and inferior pubic rami and um, uh, with a superior inferior displacement. So we can see that this is a vertical shear injury where both the components are on the same side. So it is basically a malgagne type of fracture. Coming to the other one, the vertical shear injury, a uh, bucket handle um, um, uh, type of fracture. Here, there are fractures of the um, superior and inferior pubic rami of the right side, but the contralateral posterior injury with vertical offset. So here, there is a displacement of the um, left sacroiliac joint. There is a vertical displacement, and fractures are on the right. So this is a bucket handle type of um, vertical shear injury. 
Um, some more examples of um, um, vertical shear injuries where um, in you can, um, on the axial images, it's not um, very clear. So you have to correlate it with the X-ray or the coronal recumbent. I don't think I have the coronal recumbent in this case. But this is also a bucket uh, handle. The fracture is on the right. And the um, uh, comminuted fracture um, with um, uh, widening of the uh, left sacral leg joint. And there's a comminuted uh, fracture of the uh, left iliac bone. Uh, these are the three type of fractures, but you can get a combination um, of these uh, injuries and mostly the vertical shear and the lateral compression fractures. Generally, these two are seen in um, combination. Um, these are always uh, combined mechanism, mechanical injuries, and these are always um, unstable. Uh, so same thing, there are multiple fractures. Um, along with a vertical um, uh, offset. So there's a combination of both vertical shear and lateral compression fractures. You're seeing the lateral compression fracture here of the sacrum. There are fractures of the um, uh, superior pubic ramus, also the inferior. This is the part of the, uh, say, lateral compression uh, fracture type one. And then there's the vertical offset with all the ligament stones. So there's a comp um, combination of both injuries, which is seen quite frequently. Uh, a few words about um, sacral fractures. Um, the sac in, in, uh, in the sacrum fractures, uh, basically the sacrum is divided into three zones. There are zone one fractures, zone two, and zone three. Uh, these are the longitudinal fractures. So zone one fractures are the sacral strut. Uh, zone two, uh, two fractures are through the neural foramina. And these are associated with um, uh, neural injuries. And zone three fractures are through the central part, and there is um, narrowing of the sacral spinae canal also. So these are again associated with compression of cauda equina. Uh, the other thing is uh, the transverse fractures, which are also seen through um, zone three. And these are sometimes only picked up on the um, lateral um, uh, scanograms of uh, sagittal uh, uh, reconstructions um, because the transverse fracture may be totally missed on the axial images and it may only be seen on the lateral recomats, the sagittal recomats. Um, I'm not going into details or not showing too many images because these are the simple fractures. Uh, my main talk was to concentrate on the pelvic ring fractures. So I've just included this slide. All of us know we see many avulsion fractures, and these are the common sites for the avulsion fractures. And um, uh, it is um, uh, due to the uh, pull of the uh, different um, muscles which are attaching at the um, uh, sites. Um, we see these fractures once in a while, and uh, um, they're not really very difficult to um, pick up. And they're basically simple fractures. Um, another thing that I would like to discuss today is um, the acetabular fractures. So basically, we discussed the uh, pelvic ring fractures, the different um, uh, types, the uh, different uh, combination of patterns. Um, uh, acetabular fractures are uh, uh, um, classified according to the uh, fracture morphology. Um, it is the Judet um, classification, which is uh, used. It is a bit confusing again in the beginning, but uh, it is important to know at least the um, various patterns so that again we can pick up the fractures and uh, not miss the um, subtle um, findings that are associated. So basically, uh, these fractures are um, in uh, two types uh, the elementary type fractures, which include fractures with it, only a single fracture orientation, and then the associated fracture patterns, which are a mix of the elementary types. So I'll just show you. So elementary fractures, um, uh, the elementary patterns are basically fractures of the posterior wall, posterior column, anterior wall, anterior column fractures, and a simple transverse fracture. These are just single fractures in a single orientation. Just a pictorial uh, depiction of the elementary type of fractures, establer fractures, um, this, the posterior wall fractures, in the posterior column fractures, anterior wall fractures, anterior column fractures, and transverse fractures. Then there are the associated fracture, uh, fracture patterns. These are uh, more complicated. Um, these are the um, uh, different five type of uh, basically uh, fracture patterns which are seen. I'm not uh, uh, showing all of them. Some of them are um, 
uh, a bit complex and uh, not really um, easy to um, identify. So uh, one of them is anterior with posterior hemitransverse fracture, the posterior column and posterior wall fracture. Then there's a transverse fracture with posterior wall fracture. There's a T-shaped fracture and a both column fracture. Um, now these are the associated um, uh, fractures, different types, the pictorial um, depiction. Uh, it is important to know that the um, transverse fractures are generally on the axial images are seen in this orientation and the column fractures are generally in a transverse orientation. I'll just show some examples. So again, the complete different type of fractures, we have tabular fractures, elementary and associated, so total 10 type of fractures. Again, the same thing, the, uh, it's just important to remember that the transverse fractures are seen in the um, vertical orientation here. It's not really the vertical, it's the, actually the um, uh, axial images, so they are seen in um, this plane, and the column uh, fractures are seen in the side-to-side -side direction. And the ball fractures are generally oblique, so if we can just remember this, it will be slightly easier to um, uh, identify the fractures. Out of those 10 fractures that I just uh, showed you, the complex uh, classification of acetabular fractures, uh, it is important to remember that the commonly uh, occurring fractures are um, these five fractures, and uh, which constitute more than 90%. So if you're able to identify these four or five fractures, um, uh, then um, it is easy. So basically, both column fractures, I'll just show example. Um, we can uh, pick them up. And there is a pattern, there's a transverse fracture with posterior wall fracture. We can generally see a posterior wall fracture alone. Anterior wall and uh, anterior column fractures, isolated fractures are generally uncommon, so they're not included in the list here. There's another fracture, which is a T-shaped fracture and a transverse fracture. So these are the five common types out of all those fractures that I just described. So like I said, the wall fractures are generally oblique. So whenever you, uh, on the axial images, you see a, an oblique fracture like this. So this is a posterior wall fracture. Whereas the column fracture is a column, it will be more uh, horizontal like this. So this is a posterior wall fracture. Now here, this is a posterior column fracture, all, also extending to the medial margins. This is a posterior column fracture. Same patient, three cuts from top to bottom. So this is a column fracture, it's a displaced posterior column fracture, extending to the medial margin also. So the fracture line, three cuts. Here we are seeing an, uh, an anterior column fracture. This is uh, a bit comminuted uh, fracture, it's extending almost to the superior pubic ramus. So this is an anterior column fracture. So this is the both column fractures, again, um, the axial images from superior to inferior. We're seeing a fracture of the anterior column and the posterior column. The posterior column here is displaced and it's also extending to the iliac bone superiorly. So both the anterior and posterior column fractures. This is a transverse fracture with the posterior wall fracture. So, like I said, the transverse fracture on the AP view is seen in this direction. Here, these are two different cases. This is a transverse displaced transverse fracture. In this, there is just a subtle linear lucency. It's not really a displaced fracture. And with the fracture extending into the posterior wall. And there's a transverse fracture and a posterior wall fracture. Here you can see the displaced fragment of the posterior wall. A posterior wall transverse fracture with posterior wall fracture, one of the associated um, combination fractures. T-shaped fracture is uh, fairly common in acetabular injury. Um, in this, the elementary fracture is the elementary transverse fracture, and the transverse fracture is extending to the medial acetabular wall and extending through the obturator ring. So again, the vertical fracture, not the vertical, actually the transverse fracture, which is extending to the medial wall. So this is basically a T-shaped fracture. Coming to the complications, um, some of the complications that are seen are um, vascular injuries and hemorrhage, which is um, uh, more than um, 40 percent. Nerve injuries, which are commonly seen in the um, sacral fractures. Organ injuries in uh, pelvis are um, rare. We do see the uh, bladder injuries and urethral rupture um, in about 10 to 15 percent. 
And some of the um, chronic uh, complications are chronic pain, arthritis, and immobility. Because of immobility, there is an increased risk of uh, PE. So pulmonary thrombolysis is one of the um, chronic complications of pelvic fractures. So a few take-home points. Uh, it is important to be aware of the uh, fracture classifications, um, like I told you, in, especially in the pelvic ring fractures. Uh, if you know the common pa pattern, like uh, there is a fracture of the superior pubic ramus, um, you know, what are the other fractures that you should be looking at in the posterior ring? And you should be picking up the fractures or the sacroiliac joint displacements to be able to classify the injuries. And especially in, uh, for pelvic ring fractures, it's important to look for the posterior injuries carefully, especially the slight SI joint disruption or widening. A few blink and miss fractures are, of course, the superior pubic rami fractures, which are uh, better seen on the coronals. On the axial images, those fractures can be completely missed. And if there are um, in isolation, like uh, lateral compression type 1 injuries, where you do not uh, see the stretch of the ligaments, and just this fracture, uh, which is uh, seen only on uh, uh, the coronal images, um, it can be totally missed on the axials. And not may, may, there may not be any hematoma or anything to give any kind of hint. So always look at the coronal hematomas in all pelvic uh, fracture cases or in all pelvic uh, images of trauma. Uh, not so as not to miss these uh, superior pubic rami fractures, the um, horizontal fractures. And the other thing is the transverse sacral fractures. These are better seen on the um, sagittal images. Again, these are um, uh, along the axial plane, and the only finding we sometimes may see is just subtle hemorrhage in the pelvis. And especially in the elderly, these transverse sacral fractures with osteopenia are quite common uh, in the lower sacrum, and these can be um, totally missed. So that's it. Um, if there are any questions, I'll keep.